Alrighty. We're waiting on the mobile dashboard here. Alert. No, I no. I'm really live, even though we are recording right now. There we go. Alright, guys. What is up? We're back. Here doing some financial modeling like we do on Mondays and Wednesdays. Since we're in the very thick of earnings season, with for this channel, we have a lot more to go. I have an entire little little checklist of pretty much the stream schedule coming forward. We got about five companies here this month that we're gonna be doing for our earnings updates. And just as a reminder, you can track all the stuff that we do here on the Adam Finance Hub that I made just for what we do here, Twitch. In fact, I'm gonna add on Altice right now. So, all you guys, you can find that in the comment section of this video. And I will also add it here. And you know what, I'm even gonna go and uh, if you found this link via tweet, I'll also send it here. Our and also if you went and uh, clicked on the video via tweet i just went and tweeted the link too in case you weren't able to catch the stream live you can catch it there it will also be in the comment section of the youtube page so as a reminder join the hub grab the hub that way you can keep track of all the names that we have done here on the channel without further ado let's get in to let's go and get into altice so for you guys that don't know, Altice is a um, primarily a cable telecom here in the US. In fact, this is Altice US. They operate primarily up in the Northeast with very high concentration in the New York City kind of suburb area. So New Jersey, um, kind of Long Island, uh, parts of Connecticut, parts of Philadelphia, uh, parts of Pennsylvania, that whole area. So, um, a little bit more background they primarily just do um, your traditional cable so internet TV voice they also now have a mobile um, an MVNO that they uh, launched last year it's in a in partnership with Sprint and a couple others now that Sprint is part of T-Mobile it's a little bit different but overall um, those are the three kind of revenue items I did listen to the call earlier today so without further ado we're gonna go and just get started on updating our model here. In fact, I need to update the price. That's the first thing I wanna go and do. 27.26 is what it closed at. So let's go through and just start updating the model starting with the revenue build. Now, what Altice does do that I really enjoy is that they provide a nice little document here with a lot of their um, a lot of their numbers so you can just quickly and easily if you so desire just kind of grab them all that copy paste action use your use your favorite formatting Like I said, you can see here based on the rev build, those um, those main revenue drivers already. Actually, surprise percent of revenue. Well, no, actually, not surprised because that's video. Um, I always love it when companies give you nice Excel sheets. You can uh, 
It makes it easier on me, it makes it easier on you. Um, let me go and actually increase the zoom on this so you guys can probably see it a little bit better. If you guys do need me to zoom in more, let me know in the chat and I will go and do that. There's that mobile that I was talking about earlier. And of course, what company doesn't have an other line item on their revenue? Now this was a very interesting quarter in the fact that, uh, of course, mobile will not have, those guys won't have that yet. Um, it was a interesting quarter in that they have, uh, because they operate in New Jersey, the New Jersey um, state government went in uh, said some that they had to allow for some of these uh, kind of late payments because of COVID. So um, when it comes to that, we will go and uh, follow what they did on their um, presentation versus what they have on here for some of their subscriber numbers. Um, programming cost. So, so far guys, all I've done is pretty much just grab, what the hell? Alright, I'll grab this stuff, there we go. Um, I've just grabbed just things from their Excel doc. I haven't even had to uh, manually really input a whole lot of numbers, just copy paste. All easy information to go and find too. Other than that, I've just been kind of updating some formulas here. Now their KPIs will go and have homes passed and some of their sub numbers. For those of you that are kind of new to telecom, homes passed is just kind of how many homes are connected to your network. So pretty much any new infrastructure that they've um, that they've brought along. You can go and see that they did a decent job building out this quarter. Versus the last two quarters have been nothing special. Year over year. Pretty decent as well. It's about to say. It's actually been a while since I've opened up this model. So, just have to refamiliarize myself. Of course, their users, their customers are divided into two different groups. You have your SMBs, your small businesses, aka B2B, business to business, and your residential, your everyday folk. Uh, so that's, of course, business to consumer. And I believe I made a, um, for the subs, yeah, and I was kind of, I was way overshooting it. I thought it was going to be a lot lower growth because of COVID. And obviously when I did this back in March, um, I thought it was going to be a lot less than what the, uh, what the result was. So I need to probably adjust that down a lot. Also, missed unique customer relationships pretty hard too. That's kind of the uh, the double-edged sword now for. Um... Okay, this is where I need to be careful. The broadband ones, um, uh, because they did have to go and alter some things, 
in their filings. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, right here for their net ads, uh, you can go and see they have the net additions per each category. And then they have um, less the FCC pledge to customers and the New Jersey order. So that's the actual net additions. So let me just double check um, that the net additions that they have over here for their total customers um, are the same as um, what they have over there. And we'll just double check here once I do the formulas, once I get these numbers over. What, uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, we'll just go and just double check that our net ads reflect the same thing uh, because we want to go and do and I'll have a mark for it too we want to go and have what's the uh, New Jersey FCC uh, well the FCC and the New Jersey state number net ads are and not um, and not just your, your regular net ads number One for completion's sake, and two because um, it is kind of a one-off government thing. And I'll also have a note on that when I enter in the correct numbers. Okay, um, so video should be net additions Q over Q. Okay, so we need to change that. Um, so I'll go and make a note here. I'll just do alt four and make, and I'll just do the reverse formula. changed wildly from 40 from 70 net ads to only 52 which is um, a pretty big move when you think about um, what these effects will have so uh, 52.6 this is another good uh, reason why when you're modeling you want to go and have these notes on there. That way, when I come back next quarter and I see these blue numbers, I go, "Well, why the, you know, one? Why the hell are they blue?" And um, two, why, um, if there are any adjustments next quarter too, I'll know because of these. And uh, and uh, just having those notes on there really helps you out. Um, Let's just double check that our customers, yep, we are correct there. Um, I believe mobile we can only get from their slideshow. So they added, well actually, 
We should have it on here. Normally they have a line just for uh, mobile. But apparently they have it on their slideshow, so 144 subs. they give it to us. users not not net ads okay all of our arpus calculated thing we're gonna need from that Excel. Just gonna double check in case we got even to margins, which I believe I used over here in the rev build. Also all these can be carried over. Um X yes, there we go. Here it is. Um X mobile this for is I, I, I kind of back out what the cost of mobile is to Altice 
um, for our own sake. Okay, so we've updated all of these except for penetration, which I don't think, I'll have to double check. I don't remember if they give that to us anymore. That's to give us some nice forward guidance. seeing that ads I'm not seeing that's a new build penetration that's not current penetration there's capex okay We got some guidance that we'll go and use to change our full year estimates. Uh, but now we're going to go, of course, to our favorite part, which is updating the quarterly financials. And we will need their uh, 10Q. So let me just look over here at the screen. And yeah. Those little numbers look. Readable ish. And again, guys, if you can't see these, can't read these for any reason, please let me know in the comments, in the chat. Actually, wow, I don't know why I didn't get second quarter revs, but I can at least update that as well. That will be handy. Um, so I'm just gonna go and add in all the stuff. I actually kind of calculate their gross margins and stuff like that a little bit differently than um, a normal analyst would. I just do programming cost as their main cap intense cost, well, as their main kind of uh, pre operating cost cost. Not a whole lot of people do that. They kind of just do, um, they go straight to like OIBIT. So they would just use EBIT margins instead of doing that type of gross margins, uh, which is fine. It's just kind of how do you want to interpret it? I would go and say so I'm choosing to do this way you can do whichever way you like if you like to just care about EBITDA you may certainly do that method I will not count it against you So we'll just do 
Add that in. Real quick. It's always nice to have EBIT margins. And already we saw some improvement from a year ago, so that's nice. Um, our interest expense will be big because um, Altice, when they went public, well, not when they went public, when they got spun out from their um, from their European part, which is Altice over in um, Europe, uh, they got stuck with a lot of debt. So they're about five, five to six, like six times levered. Well, now they're five times levered, but, uh, which is not uh, about probably four times, five times to four and a half times levered is about normal for a decent sized telecom company because uh, you get so much free cash flow that you can go and handle the leverage. And it does add as a tax shield, of course. Which is always nice. Although Altice has been trying to keep their leverage in check and did keep their leverage moderately in check throughout all this kind of uh, COVID crisis. Um, and are still buying back shares. Uh, they actually lowered their cost of debt a little bit, um, which I did note. I need to go and change the WAC to be based on the, Q the quarterlies because of that. Um, and we will do that once I get the balance sheet done. Here, just just look at the year over year increase. They're buying about two billion dollars worth of stock a year. So, um, and that's been a part of the Alti story is you just get such capital returns on um, on holding the stock because they're pretty fine with their leverage situation. So they just use all their remaining free cash flow for buybacks. Yeah, and I'll fill that out probably off stream. As you can see here, um, I do still do the full cash flow statement for these guys. Oh, probably not for this one because they're one of those companies. Yes, this is why I don't like doing quarterly free cash flow statements. They're a company that um, it adds on throughout. Um, where it's not just a singular snapshot of their cash flow statement for the quarter, it's a continuing um, run of their cash flow, which I dislike. It's nice to see, but it's. It gets to be a massive pain to refresh all the time. I'll actually update the Q4 balance sheet as we do this as well. Accounts 
receivable. I, you, you guys will also see throughout um, this being our first earning session of me having a our first earning season of me having a Twitch stream. You guys will see from some of my models I have, I keep up with even quarterly whack numbers. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It all de it all depends on really how zealous I was when I made the model. Because um, some I did, some I didn't. Because sometimes it's just a massive waste of time, where the modeling time can go from on average 15 hours or so to build um, to longer. I mean, you guys have seen some of my uh, model builds, of course when we've done them together. Uh, just how long it takes to, and that's pretty much all I do there is the forecasting side. That's not even just putting in, you know, all the financials, all the old financials, which takes the, uh, the most amount of time. Probably about 10 or so hours, depending on how far you go back. I try to do um, at least five years, of course, which is standard, um, and do the same for quarterly. So you can understand why I wouldn't sometimes want to go and do whack um, for, you know, what would essentially be um, 20 quarters. Hopefully all these um, earning session earnings kind of updates also help you guys with some of your process. You may see, see something that uh, you guys like, you guys dislike. Um, who knows, you could be, uh, for some reason or not, um, someone that never actually updates their models uh, quarterly. I don't know why you wouldn't, but uh, you never know. Some people, yeah, this is wrong. Um, some people do some wacky stuff out there. things that I do are those charts. Those help out a lot. Um, and um, in past model builds, you guys will have seen how to also do it smartly too. So that, and Altice is one where it's pretty smart too, where I have most of it coming from. Um, a mixture of the quarterly statement and those other statements, um, subs and whatnot, and have all the calculations there, and then that way I just have to literally add a column and, you know, drag over the data and it will all populate and auto-update all of our charts. Because they are a little bit of a pain to set up when you first do, um, when you first add them to your model, but afterwards, as long as you set them up smartly, they take no time at all to update. Altice also has just a massive um, liability side of their balance sheet, which normally is a red flag. Um, having so much um, I mean, their liability side is pretty massive. Also because there's a lot of different structures in play. Um, derivatives and such like that. You'll notice here the shift also 
in liabilities from um, how much uh, debt is now short term versus long term thanks to the old credit rule. Once again, I've miscalculated something. Or I've entered in a wrong number somewhere. Yep, see what I did there? I can I completely switched these two numbers. That's not right. This is still off. different then. Yep, now we're right. Now we're correct. Now we're correct. Okay. For our other libs, I actually can do it this way. That way I stay on the same line item. For tax liabilities, which are always massive for companies like this. I forgot Altice has all of this massive amount of redeemable equity from the Europe side. It's just like they have like so many all these different tranches of shares. It's like Liberty Media.
huge difference in paint and cap. That's also because they sold off some assets. Um, this uh, this quarter. So, um, it's also how they're able to keep up all their their balance sheet pretty tight because they were able to sell off some assets. That's correct. Cool. Um, so, guys, I'm just trying to figure out where you're at. stock on here which is weird because I've definitely been covering this company for a while and I would have had it on there uh, they kind of on their their balance sheet they can have it framed weird six months, so I'm not going to do it. Um, however, what we will go and do is yeah, we'll go t tomorrow. I'll go and free up all their share buybacks and stuff like that. Um, what I will go and do is, like I have up here, whack, use whack, make whack based on cues. Um, cash, I will go. Just regular cash, I'm not even gonna use restricted cash, total debt. We'll do it as, of course, our notes payable. And that can all auto update. Risk free rate is a lot different. Um, which treasury yields at again? Yeah, that'll, that'll change the whack faux show. 10 year at 0.563. Oh, pranks town whack. Oh. Not 500%. There we go. I'll say the beta's a lot lower now, too. And of course, we'll open up Adam Finance for that. Oh, that's 
for you. There we go. Um, it doesn't even have an, it has an NA for beta, which is, I'll just keep it at that. Um, new cost of debt, tax rate. Cool. Um, and look at our estimates and kind of see what needs uh, to be changed. Even DAW margin looks, oh. Also, yeah, there, I forgot we also need to update our guidance too. Year for year growth is a big gap in residential ARPU. So does business our poop business we definitely need to change. Um, telephony revenue need to change. Broadband can probably actually go up a little bit. Given percent of residential rev right now. Video we can probably lower. Um, yeah. And also we did go and get, of course, their guidance. So we can add that to our yearly outlook. Uh, PPE capex. Um, Their guidance is actually a lot higher than ours. Actually, let's just slide that over. Um, still a lot higher than ours. So, what I will go and do, we had that at 12%, so we'll keep. Now we're at almost 1.2, so we'll probably keep it there actually. Um, share repurchases. They're going at. Um, Going back again to about 1.7 billion dollars, and uh, yeah, I already have that marked, but um, still keep it rather conservative. Like uh, if I were to go and do that 1.5 bill, it's about 47 percent free cash flow, which um, is huge. We gotta keep it conservative though. Uh, and now to go and change some of those um, revenue estimates that I mentioned before. Uh, current price target, I'd use the 34, which is pretty lofty. Um, we'll close all these guys for right now. Um, yeah, G even having it grow at 7 bips is now ultra conservative. Um, 
Although I think having it at We are starting to feel like a little bit peak cable. So I'll slow this from plus two to like 0.1, which still gets us to pretty high um, expectations. Um, Let's just make Telefony 5.5% and have that keep going down, which gives video a much higher implied. Um, Make that 1.5% growth rate. Uh, we'll switch it actually instead of to 46.5. Have that go because that's about where they're at right now for this. So we can just assume actually making making the assumption that growth stays flat for the rest of the year is probably not all bad. Residential versus biz. Um, and the biz subs as well was one that we were struggling with very much so. Because we have. Um, that should be a full year. Um, Uh, to be honest, right now, we're looking pretty close to Homes Past being right on. Only 73 more. Um, we're about halfway there on our estimates. That's not that's not too bad whatsoever. Um, I don't know why all these are set to Q3 for the year-over-year -year numbers. That's correct. Um, for actually, for unique total customer relationships, I think our essence probably needs to go up because we're below what they're currently at. Um, and B2C has exceeded our expectations so far. We were pretty much dead right Q1. So, um, I'll probably bump this up to about 75 bips. Even then we're still below, but um, if I keep that constant. Um, <laughs> their current run rate is where we're at in 2020, but still want to be a little conservative there. It's SMB that really took a hit. Um, we're just going to flat out make this a negative comp number of negative 1%. Oh, and we're still below. We'll make that negative 3%. Uh, that seems a little fair at the moment just because so far on the average they're at negative 5%. That means maybe, maybe you see some growth further on. That seems kind of fair. I mean, they won't, based on our current projections, they won't get to even where they were at the beginning of 2019 until 2020. So, um, or maybe I'm just not anticipating how deep this 
um, the pandemic could be hitting these guys. Pay TV. We look like we're doing just fine there on our estimates. Um, another one where we are more than on track. Uh, it looks like about another quarter run rate, maybe. Um, which actually means maybe we should up our uh, projections. Broadband doing about the same. Broadband doing about, yeah, let's do that little, kind of how far we off are in terms of quarterly run rate. Oh, well, we're below, so that. Um, let's bump this up to a 2.5% number. Maybe carry that. Yeah, I had it, had it going up to, yeah, let's just carry that over another year. And then make this actually serve a little bit climb. And just see how that does. Yeah. Telefana. We oh, really missed that number. So. I'll just keep that going actually. Negative four percent. Be super bearish there. Open that adds. I thought they were gonna grow at two percent, but I mean um that's tough. I'll just make this. what it currently is. Um, Cause I'll be completely honest with you guys, I had no, I thought, it, I thought we were doing 2% growth. Um, and I'm gonna keep it that way, but I was shocked at how much um, their adoption has grown. So total ARPU. Still not growing. Or about a 2% clip. Same with B to C. Although maybe that needs to inflate a little bit with the switch to broadband. You know what, let's do that. I mean, this looks so far like we're on track, though. So, so far, as our, our ARPU estimates look to be solid, in my opinion. Um, let's see how much that changed. Actually, we went up a little bit. Um, so, that's probably why the shares rallied 7% on uh, the earnings release. So, um, oh, we're already at about an hour, so this was a lengthier update, probably because of all the moving parts that, you know, this company has. Um, and so let's just check our charts real quick. Yeah, those look a lot better. Some sharp moves, but uh, overall, looks a lot better. Um, and yeah, guys, that'll, I guess I'll do it for this episode. Um... Make sure to stop by here in the next couple weeks. Well, these next couple sessions. Saturday, we're going to be doing Series 6. Uh, next time, we'll be doing Series 6. And then the time after that, we'll be doing Match.com. Then Liberty Media, Series 6. Um, all names that we have done models for on the channel. And by that, I mean we've done complete model builds for these on the channel. So that'll be exciting. That'll be our first time when we do Series that we will be updating a model that we built on the channel exclusively. So I'm really excited for that. Really excited for Match. Um, 
all names that you guys did the thesis on and if you haven't you guys can check those videos out under the modeling section on both Twitch and on YouTube and uh, thank you guys for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.